I, I think that definitely describes, you know, why we, we get so emotional uh, when people disagree with our particular um, philosophy. Um, so um, as a point of application, you know, how can the church or how, how can we as uh, individual believers uh, love our brothers and sisters uh, who vote differently than we do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think, again, one thing would be to, to really clarify in your mind, what is a biblical principle and what is a preference? And what's the difference, right? If we don't clarify that, we're going to make everything. I mean, that's what happens with people these days. Everything's a tier one issue to some people. Mm -hmm. so, how dare you? How dare you choose to do Pepsi or Coke? Obviously wrong. You know, I'm sort of like, whoa, that exactly but you know what i'm saying it's, it's sort of this everything becomes tier one um sadly for for many people these days everything is a tier three sometimes right? nothing matters right so we, we don't want to do that we want to realize no biblically the bible would call us to understanding there are absolute tier one issues and we need to be clear on those and lovingly strong on those and then these other issues we need to have an open hand and allow people to have a difference yeah. and not render judgment on them I think that's important. Um, I also think a few other things would be important too. Maybe uh, this whole, you know, the social media online conduct of Christians. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just find it baffling. Frankly, I'm <laughs> not on there that much. Um, I use a couple of different kind of platforms just to get info. I feel like I can get info faster sometimes, but I'm pretty limited. Um, one of those places is Twitter and some of you are going, oh, really Twitter? I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's full of nonsense, essentially. Sometimes, though, things will come front side in terms of, you know, understanding some things. So, I uh, saw, so, I don't know, what's that old statement? If, uh, if you're going to dine with the devil, you know, use a long spoon, right? So, okay. I just, <laughs> like, <"Mur." Yeah. laughs> but, um, but I feel like, uh, you know, believers, we need to be very, very careful about that. Because a lot of times we think we're expressing something or we're talking to some people. And in fact, the broadcast is super wide you're not actually surgically dealing with individual mm -hmm. people anymore. And then sadly, again, oftentimes it's this, uh, we're reacting instead of acting, we're reacting, you know, and, and there's almost like, I, I still imagine the person at their computer late at night and, you know, the spouse is like, Hey, honey, you coming to bed? And, and they're sitting there going, well, hold on. Because someone on the internet said something that was wrong, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be there a while. I mean, it's sort of this, um, we need to be very careful, I think, with how we interact online, and we need mm -hmm. to, um, you know, speaking the truth in love, that needs to be very much a part of that. I also think just generally speaking, and I've been saying this a lot, um, the Galatians 6-1 principle, oh, let's just hold on to that one. Uh, Galatians 6-1, uh, Paul just talks about how if anyone finds uh, someone in a trespass, a trespass, a brother or sister in trespass, you who are spiritual... Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say, looking to yourself, lest you be tempted. And I don't know if you've experienced this, Nick. I know I have repeatedly. And it's this idea of, man, um, hmm. trying to help someone with something. And I go to help them. Like maybe let's say it's uh, someone who's dealing with impatience and I'm going to help them. And then I end up being impatient in the way. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uncanny, right? Or, or there's someone who's, you know, kind of grumbling about something and you want to help that person. And I start grumbling while I'm- You, you start know, grumbling too. Just, mm -hmm. into, it's, it's wild, but it happens. And so I think, again, very much uh, in this area of discussion, uh, this person's being narrow-minded. And it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm <laughs> being narrow-minded, right? Holy. This, this is being judged. Yeah. So anyway, Galatians 6 one huge. I think it's really important. If we, if we just try to apply that, I think, man, yeah. Uh, one final question. Um, how did Jesus Christ himself um, approach politics? Yeah, you think about this. Jesus taught so much, right? I mean, he, we've got his ministry. He said, this is why I came. I came to proclaim, right, to teach. And, um, you know, as people were getting caught up in all these other kinds of things, we realized that 
uh, there were several different times when they wanted to make him king. Why? Because they were under oppression from Rome. They were sick mm -hmm. of politics in the first century. That was brutal. And so uh, they were ready to make him king several times. And what does Jesus do? He, he got away. He would leave. He was like, that, that wasn't his mission to become king. Uh, there were even times when he would tell people, after doing a miracle, hey, don't, don't tell everybody. And you're going, why? Well, oftentimes it was because of that time frame factor. He had his mission and he realized there was this pressure to make him king. Mm -hmm. That wasn't his goal. Um, when we look at his instruction on politics, it's, there's very little. I mean, essentially, we have that thing with the coin, right? And they're like, you pay taxes or not? And he, you know, his brilliant response, well, look, whose image? You know, Caesar's. Okay. <laughs> render to Caesar's what's Caesar's. Render to God what's God's. And I think he, um, you know, was very, very deliberate in those things. His, his um uh, his witness in that way goes against our bent as human beings. Yeah. For us, what we want to do is we want to um, exert power <laughs> and control our world. Mm -hmm. And Jesus comes and, and just, um, he speaks in this radical way. And he says, look, there's, I've, I've come to proclaim um, good news to captives, free, freedom for prisoners, the year of favor of the Lord. Yet my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> right. You know, here's that thing. And so I think for us, it's, it's really important um, that we, we understand that because what that means is we need to be caught up in the real battle, you know, the right. mission that we have as, as his followers, which is uh, to proclaim the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, he, he, he again tells us, how, how is everybody going to know that you're my disciples? By your love for one another. One another. That's, the battle, that's the battleground, right? Yeah. That is not this political realm, that political realm, this, it's, it's, are we demonstrating the fact that we really are his followers? Yeah. And this fascinates me. I, I, I've often thought on that verse and go, man, it's amazing because they will know you're my followers. Speaking of the world, I, I would put by your love for them. Mm -hmm. right? There is an element that's, we are called to, to, um, love those around us to care for others to demonstrate god's grace in, in this dark world and yet jesus says but they're really gonna know <laughs> you know because of your love for one another and then he goes on and says i give you a new commandment mm -hmm. another, as i have loved you and that's that is new because previously it had been um love others as you would like to be loved mm -hmm. raises the bar and says uh-uh you love one another the way i have loved you so there's that's the real battleground. That's the real mission, I think. And, and we are all, all myself, we're all prone to just going off into other, other missions. And when we fail to recognize what the battle is really about, um, we lose the distinctive witness that Christ has given us in the world, this distinctive countercultural witness of that kind of um, love for one another. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we have the opportunity um, in the next month um, to make Jesus Christ look good um, by loving one another. And so, um, so I'm thankful for your, for your time, Pastor Chris. And, um, and I do pray, uh, folks, uh, for us here at Berean, um, for us here who are, well, for those of you who might be 18 who actually get to vote, um, in the, in the upcoming election. Um, I just pray that all of us would make Christ look good, that he would be, um, our hope and, and not, and not a president and not any political figure, um, because we are citizens, like Jesus said, of, of another place of his kingdom. And so, um, so thank you again, pastor and folks. Have me. Yeah. Have, have a, have a great week. God bless you.